Timelines are a type of chart or diagram that shows how events occur in chronological order. Timelines can be used to describe the past, present, or future. A project management timeline like this one usually captures the steps or milestones that need to happen in the future to complete a project by a certain date. This is an example of a more complicated timeline for releasing new versions of software. A project manager would use a timeline like this to make sure every team is hitting the milestones they need in order to meet the deadline. In this tutorial, we're using Gliffy, which is an easy to use app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can learn more about Gliffy through the info linked in the upper right, or you can find a link to start a free trial in the video description. Gliffy comes preloaded with tons of templates, just like this one which means you can jump in and edit an existing template to meet your needs. I'm going to show you how to make one from scratch. In Gliffy, we'll go to File, New, and there's nothing too fancy about a timeline, so we're going to select Basic Diagram. This preloads the shapes you need to make your own timeline into the left panel here. So really, all you need to do to make this timeline is drag and drop out your shapes. So I'm going to start with a rectangle, and this is going to represent January week one of my timeline. And I'll draw it out. I'm going to make the text a little smaller by clicking on this edit text properties button. And let's make that smaller. I'm going to position it above the rectangle so that it's out of the way. I'm going to make this narrower because we don't need a ton of space for this timeline. So that represents my first week. Then I'm going to do command D to copy this and I'm gonna make an adjustment to position it next to it. So this will be Jan week two. Before I go in and edit the text, I'm gonna hit Command D again, and this duplicates it, but it also understands how I just positioned that last one, so that if I keep hitting Command D like this, I can make a bunch of these rectangles. Great, then I can go in and edit Jan week two, Jan week three, Four. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the date for this until I have a whole quarter. So that'll be January, February, and March all sectioned out. All right. So for doing a quarter timeline, I made some extra shapes here. I can go ahead and select and delete those. All right, and it looks like I have some more room here as well. So in order to make sure I'm using all the space on my screen, I'm going to select these. I'm gonna space them out. So I want my outer edges to be here and here. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit. I want my outer edges to be here and here. I'm going to select all these shapes. And then in the Edit Shape Properties here, we have Align and Distribute. So what I can do is I can distribute the center of each of these by clicking this button, and it spaces them all out. This is great because then I can go in and make each one larger to fill the space. Awesome. Now, this is a little hard to look at right now, so I'm going to select every other one and give them each their own color. We'll go with light orange, and we're going to get rid of this stroke color too. And then I'll select the ones that don't have a color yet, and we're going to give them a slightly darker color and again, give it that light stroke. So this helps you see the differences between weeks. Now, this is a great start for our timeline, but we need to now flow in our projects on this side of things. So I'm going to duplicate this rectangle and make it a little larger and label relabel this one projects. And we'll go ahead and give this its own color as well. All right, I think that looks good. 
make that one even a little larger. This is the base of our timeline. We've used distribute to make sure all the shapes are spaced out evenly and um, filling the space in an efficient way. And now I'm going to use another tip, which is adding layers to your timeline. So I click this layers button up here. We're gonna double click to rename this our timeline base. Hit enter to apply that. And now we're gonna add another layer. This is where our projects will live. So I'm gonna lock in this base so that I don't accidentally move anything around on that main one by hitting this locked toggle button here. And then I'll close that layers panel for now and we're gonna get started with diagramming. Now I worked at a job where every single week we released a new publication or catalog. And that was a really large production challenge. It was kind of hard to track who was working on what and when and understand when we needed to start work on the next catalog in order to stay on time. And so each of these catalogs, we had a team that spent three weeks prepping them. We labeled them something like the month that they came out and the catalog number for the year. So if we followed something like that, we might call our first project book one, and then say Jan one. And during this week, it would be publishing. So I'm going to drag and drop out another shape. I'll use a rectangle again and say publish. I'm going to remove the stroke on this and I think that looks good. All right, so then I'm gonna do Command D again to duplicate and we'll bump this one down and this would be book two. And let's say this one actually doesn't come out until Jan week three. All right. And like I said, there's a three week prep period. So this one's going to publish in January week three. And again, I'm using that command D to duplicate these shapes. It's the fastest way to go. And the Steps leading up to it that I want to document for our team here are, this is when we produce. And this week is when we would need to be concepting. And maybe I want to give these a different color too. So let's go, let's actually go light to dark. All right, so then we have book three. And let's say for whatever reason, this one isn't coming out until February week three. So then we know we have these three weeks of prep and it'll look like this. Now you might've noticed there are these green lines appearing as I'm drawing this. These are guides and they help you keep everything neat and organized. So every time I draw something, I'm trying to make sure that it's aligned with the text on the far left that gives me the project title. All right, so this actually gives our team a lot of space here. So maybe you would look at your timeline and say, hey, I could push this back. All right, let's look at book four. And let's put this one on a time crunch and say March 1 for that book. So then I know, okay, I need this three week prep time and we're gonna have to overlap. So our team's gonna need to multitask in order to get this out the door. All right, and let's throw in a plot twist. Let's say that we are gonna have a special edition book Book five is going to be a more involved project and it needs to come out March week three. So under the typical timeline, you would use these three where we have concept, produce, and publish. And just getting it lined up. 
That would be the typical timeline. But let's say this one is going to take three weeks to produce. So we need to get concept out of here for now. We need to give the team three weeks to produce this one. And so I'm stretching that rectangle back. And then we can give them, let's say, two weeks to concept. So this publishing calendar is helping me understand when our team is going to be really busy and when our team is going to have time. If I decide this is all I want to document for now, that is fine. What I can do is I can jump back to my timeline base, unlock it. Now I'm going to lock the project's timeline so I don't accidentally move those. And I'm going to select all the rectangles there and scoot this on up. Great. So that's a pretty good looking timeline to me. Now, say I want to do something similar for next quarter. I have a few options. I can either unlock both layers and select them all copy and paste, and then drag this down and do another quarter or maybe a different type of project on the same timeline. Or I can save this and now I can go to File, New, And when I select create from a template, I can jump into my team's folders, find the diagram I was just working on and open it. And it opens that old one as a new diagram for me to work from. So this makes it easy if you know you're going to be doing a similar schedule or project on a recurring basis, you can create a base timeline and then recreate new timelines using your existing one as a template. When you're done, you can click this share button to create a public URL. You can change the permissions on editing, viewing, and commenting. And you can embed the diagram in other tools. So I could share this with my coworkers in Slack really easily to get their feedback and say, hey, are you worried about this time crunch here? February looks like it's going to be really busy. That's everything you need to know to make a timeline with Gliffy. So when you're done, be sure to share and save your diagram or add links in tools so that your teammate can review and reference your beautiful diagram. If you haven't yet, be sure to sign up for a free trial of Gliffy via the link in our video description or check out more of our tutorial videos. You will be a diagramming pro in no time.